Hello students, welcome to AIMS India Online Glosses. This is a chemistry session. Here we are discussing about the chapter Is Matter Pure? In this session, we are going to see a property sheet related to this chapter. In the earlier sessions, we have studied about uh, what is matter, how it is classified into pure and impure, under different kinds of mixtures, under different separation techniques used for the separation of these mixtures. We have seen these all. So based upon these all concepts, we are going to see a practice sheet now. Let us see first about single correct answer type questions. So here there will be a question with four options. Out of four, one will be correct answer as we know. So read the question and answers carefully and try to answer them. See the first question. The properties of mixture are dash to its uh, components. So how the properties of mixture will be? When compared to the properties of components, what happens when two or more components are mixed to form a mixture? They want to lose their properties, so they retain their properties. So that is why they can be separated by using some physical means. So the properties of a mixture will be almost similar to the properties of the components mixed in that. They want to change their properties. Next question, what is, water is a compound because, is it, water is a called compound, isn't it? Yes, water is a compound and it comes under pure substances. Now, why it is called so as a pure compound? Because, let us see options, composition is fixed. Yes, if it is a mixture, the composition might be varied from one mixture to another mixture. But if you take any compound, it's a chemical composition will be always the same and fixed. For example, if you take water itself, we know it's a molecular formula as H2O. That means in one molecule of water, there are two hydrogen atoms and one oxygen atom chemically combined. This composition is always and wherever you take the water, it is fixed. However, you prepare water, when water is formed, with this combination only it will be formed. So for a compound, the composition is always fixed. So for water also it is being fixed, water comes under compound. So it is a correct statement. So the next statement, properties are different from its components. Yes, for compounds, the properties are being entirely different from the properties of the components combined chemically there. If you take in case of water itself, water is formed from two elements, hydrogen and oxygen. We know the properties of hydrogen. Hydrogen is a gaseous element and it is one of the lightest gases. It is lightest gas and it is highly explosive. It can burn in the presence of uh, uh, <coughs> air with a blue flame, it causes blasting also. So explosive gas it is. And if you take oxygen, Oxygen is also one of the gaseous substance which is essential for breathing and dissolve and is one of the mostly existing gas in the atmosphere after the nitrogen. So there are different properties of oxygen, uh, oxygen and hydrogen. When these two combined chemically, they form water H2O. But the properties of water are being completely different from these two. Water is a liquid substance, it is non-combustible, non-supporter of combustion and mostly used as a fire extinguisher, isn't it? These are the properties of uh, water. So the properties of uh, chemical compounds formed will be entirely different from the properties of the components combined. So second statement is also true about water to say as it is a compound. Next one, components can be separated by chemical methods. By only chemical methods. Yes, suppose here if you say water itself, water is formed from hydrogen and oxygen. These hydrogen and oxygen cannot be separated by using any physical method. These can be separated only by chemical means, chemical techniques only. For example, by passing electricity through this water by adding some acid to that or acidulated water. Then only water molecule will be split into hydrogen and oxygen gases. 
otherwise in any other physical methods we cannot separate this compound so generally compounds cannot be separated by using physical techniques like filtration or some other sedimentation these all we cannot use this we cannot separate these compounds by using those only the compounds can be separated into their respective components only by chemical methods so water also in the same way it cannot be separated by physical means and it can be only separated by chemical means so this also proves as water a compound chemical compound so these are the three correct statements which are supporting to say as water is a compound now the correct answer will be all of these next one which of the following is a colloid see paint blood milk is all will come under colloids these all are colloidal solutions which of the following will show tyndall effect what is the tyndall effect when a light is passed through a solution then the particles present in the solution will scatter the light so that seems like glowing that property is called tyndall effect so which of these can show that tyndall effect here so the solution or mixture in which there are some particles this considerable size they can show this tyndall effect out of these given here if we observe salt solution will be the particles visible no when salt dissolved into water that uh, uh, dissolves, dissolves into water that disappears actually to say it forms a clear solution even vinegar solution also when acetic acid is dissolved into water it forms vinegar so there is no visible boundaries for these particles after the mixing even sulfur in water also actually sulfur won't dissolve into water it is settles down but whereas in milk fat particles are spread over in the water with considerable small size so when light is passed through this milk these fat particles will scatter the light so that is called showing tyndall effect so milk can show tyndall effect because of the presence of fat particles in the water okay next one the process of separation of insoluble solids from a liquid is called is yes, separation of insoluble solid from a liquid how can we separate a solid from liquid generally different techniques can be used one of them is a filtration if the solid is insoluble into liquid then if we pass this mixture through a filter paper by using funnel the liquid will come down and will be collected in another container in the form of filtrate that insoluble solid substance will be remained in the filter paper that we call as residue in that way insoluble solid substance can be separated from the liquid by using filtration process one more is a decantation also there what they do they will generally allow this mixture of a solid insoluble solid in the liquid for some time then it will settle down so after settling down slowly they pass this uh, upper layers of this pure liquid into another container that is called decantation they separate liquid from the solid in that but here they are asking clearly the separation of insoluble solid from a liquid that is a uh, most appropriate one here is filtration by filtration process we can separate this insoluble solid substance okay filtration the process used to separate oil and water what kind of mixture is this oil and water we know both are liquids but oil won't be dissolved into water this kind of mixtures are called immiscible liquids the mixture of two liquids which are not so dissolving into one another is called immiscible liquids solution mixture so such kind of uh, mixtures generally if you take oil and water in a container one of the components will go down which is denser and the lighter density liquid will float on the other one so in that way they form 
two separate layers. Such kind of liquid mixture can be separated by using a container called separating funnel. So, two immiscible liquids can be separated by using a separating funnel. Next one, what kind of solution is milk? What kind of solution is this? Just now we have seen there in previous questions. It's a colloid. So this can show Tyndall effect. Milk is a colloidal solution. Next, a liquid and a solid are found together in a single phase. What is this known as? So they are telling here, they exist in the single phase, means in the same state. For example, if we take salt into water, actually salt is a solid substance. When it dissolves this common salt into water, after stirring, we observe completely the mixture formed in the liquid state only. No solid is appeared or no solid is seen after mixing. So, solid and liquid substances are mixed. Finally, they came to one state, that is a liquid phase. Then that is called a solution or true solution. The mixture in which the components came into the single phase is called a true solution or solution to say simply. So here they're telling solid and liquid they came to single phase then that is said to be a solution. Okay next. Which of the following is a homogeneous solution? What does it mean homogeneous solution? Here this also can be given the same, in the same phase. The mixture in which components are mixed uniformly and they came to single phase is called homogeneous solution. See here, muddy water. In that, mud particles will be seen through the water. So it is not single phase or homogeneous. If you see bread, It is also, uh, it is a, just so you can say, compound there. And concrete, if you see concrete, it is a mixture of uh, what we can say, sand, cement, and some gravel, water. These all are mixed. Even after mixing also, these uh, sand and even uh, these uh, stone particles will be seen. So it won't come under homogeneous. Now, if you see a solution of sugar in water, what happens? When you dissolve sugar into water, it completely dissolves into it, disappears into the water. It takes the spaces present between the molecules of water. So it will come under, it will come to a single phase. It seems like a liquid. No solid particles of sugar will be appeared. So it can be said a homogeneous solution. The mixture of sugar and water is an example of homogeneous solution. Okay, next one. What kind of colloidal solution is an emulsion? So what is emulsion here? Emulsion is a mixture formed by mixing two immiscible liquids. So an immiscible liquid will be dispersed into another liquid. That is called emulsion. Now we can say emulsion is a colloidal solution formed when a liquid dispersed in another liquid. Okay, liquid in a liquid uh, colloidal solutions are called emulsions. These are, we can say, uh, how face creams and these uh, Vaseline are examples for these uh, emulsions. Okay, next. What kind of solution is drinking soda or soft drink, we can say? Drinking soda, how do they prepare this drinking soda? So they take some water into a container first and then by applying high pressure they mix some carbon dioxide gas into this water. At high pressure we know as pressure increases solubility of gases into liquids increases. So by applying high pressure on this liquid and carbon dioxide gas will be dissolved into it. Now soda will be formed. So we can say soda is a gas in liquid mixture. Carbon dioxide gas is dissolved into water. Gas in liquid mixture it is. 
ओके नेक्स्ट वॉट काइंड ऑफ सोल्यूशन इज अमाल गम यस अमाल गम्स आर ऑल्सो मिक्सर्स एक्चुअली दिस कम अंडर मेटल मेटल मिक्सर एक्चुअली बट इन दिस वन ऑफ द मेटल्स विल बी मेरक्यूरी वेन मेटल्स आर डिजॉल्व इन टू मेरक्यूरी दे फॉर्म अमाल गम्स दे फॉर्म ए होमोजीनियस मिक्सर कॉल्ड अमाल गम फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ गोल्ड इज डिजॉल्व इन टू मेरक्यूरी गोल्ड मेटल विल बी डिजॉल्व इन टू मेरक्यूरी ऑन फॉर्म्स ए होमोजीनियस सोल्यूशन दट इज कॉल्ड गोल्ड अमाल गम इफ अ सिल्वर इज डिजॉल्व इन टू मेरक्यूरी दट फॉर्म्स ए अमाल गम कॉल्ड सिल्वर अमाल गम जनरली दीज अमाल गम्स आर मिक्सर्स ऑफ मेरक्यूरी विथ सम अदर मेटल्स सो यू कैन से मेटल्स इन मेरक्यूरी आर सम सॉलिड्स इन टू मेरक्यूरी ओके जनरली दीज अमाल गम्स लाइक सिल्वर अमाल गम मेरक्यू सिल्वर गोल्ड अमाल गम these are used in filling of teeth cavities so these amalgams are formed by mixing some solid metals into mercury so solid in mercury amalgam is a type of mixture of uh, solid in mercury okay next one which of the following operators is used to separate a mixture of immiscible liquids what does it mean by immiscible liquids immiscible liquids means the mixture of two liquids which they do not dissolve one into another which they do not mix each other such kind of mixture is called immiscible liquids mixture for example if you take oil and water or kerosene oil and water when you take the mixture of these two even though you stir them well they won't mix one into another they form two separate layers the heavy liquid water will go down and the lighter liquid oil or kerosene oil will float on the water so such kind of liquids are called immiscible liquids these liquid mixture can be separated by using a uh, funnel called separating funnel okay by using separating funnel two immiscible liquids can be separated next one the materials which contains at least two pure substances and show the properties of their constituents is called yes when two or more pure substances combine together and the forming is a uh, matter which show the properties of the constituents mixed in it is called a mixture so it's called a mixture next one what is a solution of iodine in carbon tetrachloride called carbon tetrachloride actually iodine is soluble in uh, some solutions like some liquids like alcohols and one of the organic substance uh, carbon tetrachloride so actually the solutions can be liquid solutions can be classified in two types aqueous solutions or non aqueous solutions here aqua represents water aqua nothing but water aqueous solutions means the solutions in which the solvent is water so some solid substances will be dissolved in water then the solution formed are called aqueous solutions if i say aqueous hydrochloric acid that means hydrochloric acid is dissolved into water So that water solution of hydrochloric acid is called aqueous solution. Aqueous solution means the solution in which the solvent is water. Some other solutions will be there in which water is not present. Even though they don't have water, some liquid will be there that dissolves some other solid substances into it. Such kind of liquids in which there is no water are called non aqueous solutions means there is no water in that solution so here if you see iodine dissolved into carbon tetrachloride and forming solution but here it is a solution which does not contain water now we can say it is a non aqueous solution and even this iodine often dissolves into alcohol then also it is called non aqueous solution and it is also called tincture of iodine but here the uh, solvent given is carbon tetrachloride 
then it is simply called non aqueous solution okay next one which of the following is a characteristic of both mixtures and compounds say one of the properties is being common for mixtures and compounds let us see that they contain components fixed in fixed proportions of course compounds are having the components fixed proportion but mixtures they do not the composition or the proportions of the components may vary in the mixtures if we take one glass of water with one spoon of salt that is a mixture so the same one glass of water you can add two spoons of salt then also it is a mixture so the proportions of the components in mixtures may vary but in compounds does not it is fixed composition in compounds so it is not common property see the next one their properties are the same as those of their components yes in mixtures the properties are all, uh, similar to the properties of the components because after forming mixture also properties of the components won't be changed they retain their properties but in the case of compounds properties will be entirely different they change their properties so it is also a not uh, not common property next you see their weight is equal to the sum of the weights of the components yes this is correct and this is a common property of mixtures and compounds the total mass of the mixture or compound formed will be equal to the total mass of the components mixed or combined to form these mixtures and components or compounds so this is according to law of conservation of mass the total mass of the components in the mixture or compound will be equal to the total mass of the mixture or compound formed mass won't be changed okay so this is a common property of mixtures on compounds we can say this okay next question which of the following is a is an example of a mixture see here out of the given which is a mixture see first one sugar sugar is not a mixture it is a pure substance it is a single kind of molecules represent in that so it is a pure substance that is called compound what about next one brass we know brass is an alloy what is an alloy alloy is a mixture formed by mixing two or more metals or two or more metals with a carbon then the resultant mixture formed is called an alloy so alloy is a mixture of two or more metals so brass is a mixture generally brass is made from copper and zinc by mixing these two metals in the molten state so a mixture is formed brass okay now carbon dioxide and nitrogen dioxide these two are also will come are coming under few substances and that to they are compounds next by which process the drugs from the blood are separated generally the drugs present in the blood can be separated by using some techniques like chromatography in chromatography the small particles present in the mixture also can be separated so chromatography is used for separation of drugs from the blood samples okay next which of the following processes of separating substances in involves both evaporation and condensation yes evaporation means the conversion of a liquid into gaseous form and condensation means the conversion of vapors of liquid into liquid gas liquid form again on cooling so in which process these two are occurring simultaneously see here filtration will be there any change in the test state no just an insoluble solid will be separated from the liquid component in the filtration so it is not what is crystallization crystallization involves 
separation of the dissolved solid substance from a liquid into the solid form again. If you see distillation, in distillation process, what happens? The mixture of an insoluble solid from the liquid can be separated. They do first their evaporation process. Then the liquid component will be evaporated into the gaseous form. Solid substance will be remain back. On these vapors of the liquid obtained here will be collected and cooled again. Then they will condense again to the liquid form. In that way, the mixture of solid and liquid will be separated by using these two techniques called evaporation and condensation. These two will be done in this um, distillation process. So distillation involves these two evaporation and condensation. Okay, next one. Which of the following processes is useful to collect pure water from a solution of sugar and water or salt and water? Yes, which process can be used for the separation of salt and water or sugar and water? We can use either distillation or evaporation. In the evaporation process also, water will be evaporated off, pure salt or sugar will be remained up. Even the distillation also, water and salt or water and sugar can be separated. But if you observe once the question clearly here, to collect pure water, so to collect the liquid component, compulsory have to follow distillation process. Because in the evaporation process, sugar or salt will be remain. Water will be evaporated off. It cannot be collected in that process. So to get back the pure water, we have to collect those vapors and we have to condense them. This happens only in the distillation process. Next one. Which of the following processes can be useful in separating the salt from a mixture of sand and salt? So what to be separated? Salt to be collected. So we have to collect the salt and we have to separate a sand from it. So how can we separate a salt from the sand? Can we do by filtration or evaporation? We cannot. So the only technique used here it is a dissolution process. So out of the sand and salt, we know salt is soluble into water. If we pour water into this mixture, salt will be dissolved into water, whereas sand remains undissolved. So when you under when you take this to filtration, sand can be separated from this mixture. Now salt water will be separated. From that, salt can be separated by using evaporation later evaporation or distillation. So here the technique used for the separation of salt from sand is a dissolution, dissolving, dissolving the mixture into a suitable solvent. Next, by which method can ammonium chloride be separated from sand? Ammonium chloride, it is one of the uh, components which can be converted into gases formed directly from solid state on heating isn't it it won't be it will be converted from gas to uh, solid to gas on heating that's called sublimation so ammonium chloride is one of the sublimable substance this can be separated from sand by the process called sublimation next what is the technique used to separate dirt particles from cloths in a washing machine? Yes, dirt particles are removed from the cloths in the washing machine by whirling, twisting or rotating fastly. That is called centrifugation. By centrifugation process, dirt particles are separated from the cloth. What type of mixture is steel? We know steel is a mixture of solid solid components. Generally, iron is mixed with uh, some other metals like uh, nickel, chromium, and some carbon. These all are mixed. So, there, solid solid homogeneous mixture is formed in the formation of a steel. So, steel is a solid solid homogeneous mixture. 
नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन आइडेंटिफाई ए प्योर सब्सटेंस फ्रॉम द फॉलोइंग सी प्योर सब्सटेंस फर्स्ट वन से हियर स्टील इज स्टील ए प्योर सब्सटेंस नो बिकॉज जस्ट नो वी हैव टोल्ड स्टील इज ए मिक्सचर ऑफ टू और मोर सॉलिड्स टू और मोर मेटल्स सो स्टील इज नॉट ए प्योर सब्सटेंस इट इज ए मिक्सचर and if you see next one magnolium it is also one of the alloys just like steel but the components are different two or more metals are mixed in this also so magnolium is also one of the alloys and it is a mixture not pure substance and what about ammonia ammonia is a chemical compound with molecular formula nh3 it has fixed composition so ammonia is a pure substance and it is a compound ammonia is pure substance what about gunpowder gunpowder is a mixture of sulfur charcoal and these all these all are uh, these all are mixed in the formation of gunpowder so it is a mixture not a pure substance only ammonia is a pure substance among these all so there are the single correct answer questions from this chapter is matter pure thank you for watching our video please subscribe our youtube channel aims today for latest updates on recorded videos